All right. Back to Dragon Rider, Natalie the Dragon Rider's sixth grade reading. I scan him and his review of the tower. He has a hand on my shoulder, keeping me in place. His mood lightens a touch as he smirks. More, it seems as if he came to a conclusion that I have no idea about. He would match those living in the tower, not me. I don't belong there. I live six to a room in the dorms. You must become stronger or you will die from your power. When you are surrounded by the strongest on campus, you may grasp further my meanings. Alex releases my shoulder. That was his conclusion? How? The tower does not offer me the same interest as the confusing male beside me. What do you even mean? The gardener motions to the tower. You belong there. Don't deny your strength, Natalie Green. I will help you succeed. Nothing about this day is what I thought it would be. To be offered even a suggestion of living in the tower is a fool's idea. But I cannot help myself from staring at it. To reach senior year in the tower is a dream every student has. Reaching that point is nor nearly impossible, even if it seems required. The first five years are to teach control of magic. These three middle school years are to open up the basic skill of magic wheeling. It's to find where we belong and what our magic is. High school, those last four years, prove your magic. It reflects who you are as a mage. Unlike many in my class, I have no idea what my magic is. My mother did not wield magic, refused any time I brought it up. So I'm walking into this with a power undeniably strong without any idea as to what it is. How can I understand it enough to say where my strengths are? Where do I go from here? There are too many questions. Alex! I turn about, looking for the one who dragged me here, but he's gone. As if disappeared completely, I scan for footprints, but the ground offers nothing as if he spell has a spell for flight foot. Many majors do. Snow isn't known to be nice on boots anyway. Wait, was he wearing boots? Giving up on my search, I drop to the ground. What can I expect now? Will I be punished for ruining my clothes with dirt and snow? My classes for the day were canceled. Everyone expected me to be packing up and leaving. Before morning, she said. Now, I have until June. Only a few months where I'm still a student. My future looks grim. I went from questioning if I should ask for new boots to not even sure who I can ask for boots. I have no support from anyone. I have no direction. Come June, I'll need to have a plan. Where do I go? How will I get there? My eyes closed, thinking of being a senior in Senior Tower. Not that I have any idea what it will look like as a young adult. Nor do I have a grasp as to what the rooms are like inside the tower. I'm so used to living in the dorm room. Of the six of us, I am the only non-fairy. They are figuring out their direction early, learning tricks that match their magic. Here I am with so much power and ease casting that I don't have any idea what type of mage I am. Mine is Dragon Rider, a new title. A title I've never heard before. What is Dragon Rider? Am I the only one? Why do I feel as if the title is a rarity, yet I cannot be alone in its attachment? Poking wakes me. It has me realize I fell asleep. On the grounds near Senior Tower. I notice grass appearing around me. Someone let a warmth and spring spell happen on the area around Senior Tower. It is why the seniors are separated out. It may also be why I passed out. To be woken with only poking helps. Some of the older students aren't as nice. Whoever caused the spring spell could have noticed me and done something cruel. I do not deserve to be here. The one who woke me, though, is a student I never saw before. She may be about my age, but her looks are more delicate. Soft peach skin, curly red hair, well-formed body and a perfectly kept white silk dress and thick white winter coat. Magenta eyes. W wait, wait a second. Magenta eyes are special. 
No typical human has magenta eyes. That is royalty. What? She looks too unreal to be before me. Am I still dreaming? No royalty would ever interact with me. I saw you staring before. She pauses, looming over me, then adds belatingly, At the tower. My mind clicks through the jungle of thoughts as I start to grasp what is before me. Or rather, who? Not that I can name the royal children. King Charles is the only one I know. That leaves me to my second question. How did she see me staring? Alex dragged me about when everyone should be in class. Given the... Well, it was cold and snowy before the spring spell happened. As I stand up, I notice only the area near the ground is warm. It is the wrong weather to be outside for class. In another week or two, herbalism is guaranteed to be outside. This is my first year with herbalism. I'm excited to really try something. So far, it's been indoor only. If I can far surpass my knowledge in herbalism, that may help me survive after I'm kicked out in June. I try to push that thought away and turn to, return to the magenta-eyed princess before me. Nothing says she's anything besides princess. Her stance is perfect. Her hand offering me help is delicate in action. Her voice is balanced and sweet. She could tell me to kill someone, and I would just say yes before knowing what I was saying yes to. This is the fairy tale level expectation of princess. Her training has me wanting to duck my head and apologize. Apologize just for existing. Pretty sure that is called rude. You shouldn't apologize for existing. Before being a princess, she is a person. I accept her offered hand. The soft, perfect hands of a princess. I must be dreaming. I start tomorrow. Her voice is soft and light. I was just moving in. Are you new too? Shaking my head, I review her all over again. Maybe the eyes being magenta is a trick of the light. No. As I turn my head, nothing changes. Perhaps I know nothing at all. My knowledge is limited, after all. No, I was having one of those meetings that last all day, even if they're only a few hours. I manage to stand without ruining her perfection. She tells her head, watching me with a question mark look. Guess she's never had such a meeting before. I never did before today, but there were several books that included them. If she's royal, she should be used to such an idea, even if she never had to participate. Well, I'm Cynthia. No, wait. Um, I'm Brooke. Forgive my forgetfulness. I am Brooke. Her mood lips over the name. I'm not sure how to take it, given she gave me two names. The repeated one should be correct, right? With a shrug, I offer her a quick handshake. I am Natalie Green. Nice to meet you, Brooke, right? Brooke nods at my question. It calms me. She starts a slow meander back to the tower. I follow, drawn in by her controlled gait. It looks so trained. I feel poor walking beside her. I look poor standing next to her. Her outfit is magically perfect. I can tell. I'm in servant wear. Whoever she is, she's rich and hiding out. Why here? Perhaps Alex left me here in effort to befriend her. Were you just with the gardener? A quick glance around reminds me of Alex's disappearing act. Yes, he does the work about the campus, keeping stray spells from causing harm to... This time I pause in my words to really weigh them. Alex is the gardener now. I can recall errors and issues only a year ago. Even six... Even six months ago, there were concerns... Alex leaves nothing to falter. Is he picking this place in a partial act to hide the princess? Given the quality of work and the indication he received a special contract, Alex may have picked this school because he can hide her here. Brooke stopped when I did. Her eyes are open and trusting, not typically expected looks from a royal. Nor would she be used to wandering without guards galore. Her stance is very high class, and it has me fix my posture automatically. 
Hers looks so poised and polite. Yes? This sounds crazy. Who's Alex? How does he relate to this princess? It seems more likely they have a connection, but I have no idea what it is. I must ignore that for now. Alex handles making the place perfect. He does an amazing job. In the lightest, softest voice ever, Brooke says, must be tough on him. Her eyes gaze at something in the distance, but what? I wouldn't know. It is how I imagine several of my princesses and their stories to look. Brooke basically glides through the air over to the tower door. With a hand on the door, she turns back to me. Are you coming in? She invited me? I nod, stepping forward. Brooke has lead and shows a trained leadership I'm starting to expect. But more it's a way of movement, a stance. Her dress is perfect. Her walk is perfect. She's a pretty little princess. Can she do more than just look right? Am I seriously looking at the next queen? Her room makes ignoring my thoughts easy. It's huge and fluffy and pink. White with so many marks of pink. The one pillow I touch may be the softest thing I have ever felt. It's pure comfort with fur and feathers. My thoughts are having a pillow at all being considered high quality. This is at another level. The quality is so high I may start floating on it. No. It's more like I am drowning. Fear has me refraining from touching everything. Brooke seems at ease in such extravagance. This is her world. This is far from mine. It is literally four perfect rooms for a perfect little princess, including a maid service that comes in daily to keep up after her. A small black stuffed cat lies on the bed. It looks so real. Unable to contain myself, I reach out to touch it. The cat mews as a response. Instead of touching, I pull back, holding my hand as if the thing swiped at me. It didn't. But it does move to look in my direction. That is, until Brooke sits beside it. This thing looks stuffed. It has to be stuffed. Living creatures cannot be kept at school. It's magic. The princess picks it up to cries of fear from the stuffed cat. Do you not just love her? Brooke twirls with the cat who cries out, terrified. I've made up my mind. I don't want a stuffed magic cat. Not sure how I could come in contact with one, but I definitely don't want it. Brooke? I wait to catch her eyes. Magenta eyes. Princess walk. Princess room. There is even a stand of crowns sitting on her desk. Not that a high-class female wouldn't have tiaras to wear. The cat is nice. More, I'm wondering. She stares at me while petting the cat. I wait for her to plop on the couch. It's not a plop. I expect people to plop. Even her casual drop on the couch is graceful. Are you not hiding the fact you are the future queen? The number of blinks she offers me is uncountable. She hugs the cat closer as it bats at her. Stuffed cats don't have claws. Who knew? How did you know? That soft, pure voice is now filled with terror. Graceful terror. I take a step forward, tapping the side of my eye. Your eyes. Magenta is such a rarity. Only the royal family has it. Brooke releases the cat. As that cat runs off, she pulls her knees up to her chest. Her eyes mist up over the knowledge I picked up on. And if I know, most would. This is not easy to hide. Even the faraway school meant for the lowest caste. If anyone knows I am Cynthia, I am sunk, she turns to me, her royal magenta eyes filled with fear and concern. Now she matches the cat. You may not know this, but I'm not actually a princess right now. I did not know, nor do I have any idea who Cynthia is. My clue is specifically her magenta eyes. You're not? I drop to the ground. Not graceful, just a big plop. I'm the opposite of graceful. My legs gave out. To bring such a thing up makes me look wicked and concerning. To think Alex knows this person. To think I am acting as if I am allowed to be here with her or chatting as if two girls at school. She's a princess. I'm nothing. 
Even if she isn't exactly a princess, she's connected to the royals. I'm connected to the slave trade. Well, no, Brooke puffs out, puffs her skirt as if fixing it. But really, it will only make things worse. M my mother is a cousin to the king. She carries the magenta eyes, but does not have them herself. When I was born, everyone was surprised. Occasionally, children of the royal bloodline have magenta eyes at birth, and they disappear as they age. I was hidden in my castle, denied the world outside, denied life. My eyes have never changed, only glowed brighter and stronger. I pull my legs against my chest, watching her sink further into the couch. Her mood has dipped, and it's my fault. I... Brooke pops up stronger. She gains her poise, posture, and strength. So the plan is, I will marry Prince Charles. Oh, when I found out, I refused, unless I gained some freedom before being caught by the royal decree. Even if on the outside she is a strong, hardened shell, there is no way she truly feels as if this small act of defiance is enough. How can I help? Then the words come to mind. The real reason no one would stop this, even if they may be closer family than most would allow. It has been said when both the king and queen carry the royal magenta eye, the country will suffer no great ill. It is a repeated phrase in many royal books. In history books for our country, dual magenta eyes were sought. Now it can come to fruition. But to be forced to marry your cousin? Or are they not truly close? The future princess twists her hair, making a mess of her curls. She has nothing to say to that. She'll be queen because the country would give her no other option. How foolish. Are you scared? I lean forward, reaching out. Her foot is the only thing within my reach, but it feels befitting. Compared to her, I am nothing. No more than a worthless, useless slave compared to the et uh, Eptimen of perfection before me. Brooke stands up, breaking fury of her sadness. Of course I am scared. Even if you are no one of concern, I could still be considered a pretty piece to most. I could be used as a victim of some plot or a distraction as the country struggles. Some random person once said, two magenta eyes would be perfect for the throne. I pity those who think such now. It gave me little option, hidden from the world with no more than pity gossip of the servants. Now, even with the option of school, I am going to be noticed right away, all because my eyes make it clear as crystal. She motions to the items caught in her face, almost as if her eyes were a sign of villainy. How about... I glance aside. How could I offer anything of any real worth? There is little that I can offer at all, let alone something that may hide the princess in this low-end school. What can I do to hide such a being of perfection from the students who rarely graduate? If I never heard of her, it is rare to say they know what she looks like, even if they may have heard of such a person. Does that mean a simple eye color change would be enough? What about my eye glamour spell? It is the first step to changing the looks of a person. Eyes are said to be the ease, to be easy. However, I can only do my strong bright blue. Would she mind that? It could solve the problem. It could make things worse, although I question how. I sigh, watching my feet. Brooke leans towards me, eyes lit up over my partial offering. I did not say anything about my eye spell. Can I offer? Would she accept it? Would it work? Do you have a suggestion? I bite my lip. Or do you do just offer hope? Her balloon deflates so easily. I need to offer. Even if it fails, helping the princess would mean something. I exhale and move to her side. I can do this. My spell may save the day. Even if she was no one like myself, this is a privilege, an offering I want to give. To be useful, even for a second. Even if it is the only time I will ever see such a person as this.
This spell worked on my classmate when I tried before. Hold still. Please say it works on such bright eyes. Even with her questioning look, I cover her eyes with my hands. The spell whispers out without effort. My skill has been high, my mana bank higher. It seems little is beyond my limits. One day I'll find out. For now, this has to be enough. While I cut her, cuddle in my overheated hands, Brooke moves to the mirror. She stares at her no eye color. Bright blue. Still pretty rare, but not so much so she'll be called princess just walking around. I was even tempted to before. Cynthia can stay in her rooms at the castle. Brooke will join the classes at school. My eyes are blue, Brooke turns me eyes wide, the same as yours. I nod. I learned the spell not that long ago. My extent right now is my own eye color. Several thought I was failing until I hit another with the spell. They are beautiful. Brooke captures me in a hug. It shocks me. No one has ever hugged me. Not really. Not because they wanted to. How do I respond? Brooke even bounces while hugging me. I can use a spell and make everyone think my eyes have always been blue. It is perfect. I step back, breaking free of her. Can you? As perfect as the idea is, the spell is not for someone who never used magic before. How trained is she? I can give you the spell, but are you able to cast it? Brooke shifts nervously, twisting her hands before her. She throws her hands out as her head sinks. No. Her motions flip fast as she comes to me again, taking up my hands. Her bright blue eyes seem almost off on her face. Is more me getting used to the magenta. Plus, it's weird to see my own eyes staring back at me. But you can. You can change my eyes to be blue, and no one would know. Please? Can you help me change my eyes? How does anyone say no to such outright begging? This would be gaining favor with the future queen. How can anyone see that as a bad thing? Sure. How will we make it work, though? I live in the dorms. She's in the tower. It's unlikely our classes are the same. How can I reach her before others see her? My spell cast has an unknown time length if you just let it go. Some in the class were back to normal before class ended, but my attempt was broken on purpose before the next class begun. I'm going to stop there because that's over 20 minutes. All right. So you get to hear more about Brooke and Natalie's interactions next time. All right. Bye.